It's something that I've heard having done this job for five years so many times, which is when we talk about somebody who uh, took their own life, that the, 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 the people that uh, are left behind will say that it came out of the blue, that it was a complete shock, that quite often the person was the life and soul of the party, they seemed to be fine, everything seemed to be working out for them. And this kind of this happens again and again and again. And at the same time, you see a lot of organizations or a lot of kind of very well-meaning people talking about spotting the signs and trying to give people uh, an, an ability to prevent suicide by understanding its, its imminence. Um, and one of the pieces of insight that we worked up with uh, uh, our, our clinical advisors was that there are just not signs. So often there are no signs to be spotted. Um, and so we wanted to, to raise that um, as an idea, but not in any way create this kind of sense of panic because, oh my God, what about my mum? What about my son? What about my friend? Um, or, or a sense of kind of impotent rage where oh, I don't know what to do about this then. You've given me this awful information. But what we needed to do was make it very clear that suicide can affect anybody. And people don't look suicidal in the way that I would suggest do a quick Google image search of suicidal person and it's everybody has got their head in their hands you know it's it's exactly as you'd imagine that imagery to be look at the imagery in the last photo these people are on the face of it enjoying life maybe they they are enjoying life at that moment and suicide came very shortly afterwards but what we need to be able to do is understand the maintenance of the people around us whether they're feeling great or whether they're feeling awful is is doable is achievable and is something that is very very important in terms of that when people see those images and some of those images as you say look like there's there's my mate having a night out that's what that's what we look like when we're going out or that's what we look like in a photo do you think there's a danger that some people will see that and it'll it'll compound that idea that they'll think well, yeah. How would you know? Like, what what could what can you possibly do if you're if you've got a photo yeah. like this? Well, and and that's the reality of the situation. So when when we understand that as 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 a reality that suicide can affect anybody, we then need to give the tools. And so every part of the campaign, uh, whether that's the physical. Um, uh, exhibition on the South Bank, which is going to be really impressive with, the, with the, these 50 huge images down, down the South Bank, uh, or whether that's the amazing film that has been put together using uh, video, uh, which is just mind blowing and awful and brilliant, uh, whether it's the huge amount of great partners like you um, and in print and in television and in um, out of home advertising, all of those places, it's all about solution. So there are everything has a QR code on it. Everything pushes to our uh, dedicated content uh, on our website, which is about equipping people with tools. We, 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 you, you, you raise the issue and then you provide the solution. And this, one of the key solutions, which I think people are, are reticent and, uh, and perhaps misunderstand is talking about suicide. And that's a very different thing. You know, suicide and mental health, they're not the same subject. They, they sometimes, you know, they Venn diagram, but they're not the same subject. And I, I think I mentioned I've done this job for five years. And as I come to say the word suicide, there's a little teeny tiny handbrake comes on in my mind still, even with doing this job. When we allow it to stay in the dark, we allow it to prosper. When we bring it out into the light, it doesn't like it. And talking to people about suicide is a key objective of this campaign. That we have to make it a part of what we discuss because it's a part of us as a species. It's it's such a huge a huge issue, and I wonder whether or not if you do see these images and you do look at that, each person will kind of see something a little bit different because, of course, the, the images, of course, are all different. But everyone's perception or everyone's point of view of suicide where it comes from how you perceive it will be slightly different as well so i think yeah. that's going to be one of the interesting reactions how do you think people will respond when they see the pictures i, I think one of the well f for me one of the overwhelming out the takeouts of the the images and of the film uh are that they they don't comply with what we think suicide looks like i mean i'm sorry that is absolutely obvious isn't it but but they humanize these people, they're just instantly likable because they're like us. You know, there's 
um, so actually, what somebody in the in the in the film ha bears a, a physical a resemblance to my son, which which I, I find very very jolting. But it's so important that we understand that people that die by suicide are not over there somewhere. They're not the Google image. Uh, results they're not it doesn't happen to other people it happens to us as a society it happens to us as groups of friends and colleagues and teammates it happens to us as families and so yeah the the, the perceptions of each individual I think is very very it's devastatingly sad but it's also incredibly powerful because they're us they're not something else they're us you can completely understand if a family member lost a loved one to suicide that they would sort of you know, close the front door and, and, and decide, you know, to, to live in, you know, their own world. And yeah. yet so many have come forward with these images, these bittersweet images, you know, that, and they speak, the, the, the families who put that forward, they speak proudly of the person who's in that photo. And yet that photo is the last photo. So there's incredible strength in, in the families getting involved in no. this and, and laying out their own there has been an inspiration the whole way through it. They're, they're absolutely incredible. One of the things that the, the, I think the most fierce supporters of Calm are people who have been tragically bereaved by suicide and their motivation is almost always the same. They don't want anyone else to experience what they've experienced. And that, that I mean, that is, it's, it's hugely inspiring to, to see these people who have suffered the worst thing in, in the world, I, you know, I, I can't think of anything worse. But you know, kind of losing your, your child, for example, must be the most terrible thing to have to live with. Yet to turn that devastation through anger into motivation and a willingness to, to put that picture on in, into the national conscience, where a huge issue over the years has been the shame that's associated with suicide people crossing the road to avoid the the, the families left behind that the, 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 we still carry this idea as a society of, of suicide as being well I mean the whole term commit suicide comes from it when it was criminal um, and there's there are still elements of that the, the, the whole taking the easy way out kind of thing that you know you still see in scripts and stuff these people are just absolute superheroes in coming out of that darkness and trying they're only trying to help other people you know that's all they're trying to do and and actually uh, i can almost feel myself going a little bit because the that they've also expressed throughout this very long process this has been going on for a long time um the, the campaign putting it together they've they've expressed recently as we come to the end that They've they've found it inspirational themselves, and they've 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 taken some joy from it, which is just a, a wonderful thing. Absolutely, absolutely, and I guess as well the way that they then talk so uh, positively about the conversation around suicide. What we need to do, I guess, as a society, is is, is shift that to the everyday Joe or Joanne who has not been affected by suicide, and I'll say not been affected by suicide yet. That that conversation as an openness to say yeah let's talk about this this is a really important issue because it affected us we that that's what i think where we're at in terms of that conversation just to pick it up and place it on the other side of a line which means that people then talk in a preventative way rather yeah. than a, a reactive way yeah, it's, it's 125 people a week and every suicide affects more than 140 people it's 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 massive impact on society the covid has maybe slightly twisted our perception of numbers in in that, in that kind of context but 125 families groups of friends groups of colleagues teammates mates you know are affected this is it's it's again and again and again and we at, at calm i think have now really sharpened our focus on the fact, as you exactly put it, we've got to pick it up and move it over a line. We have to talk about it. It's 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 like there's there's a tumor and we're not going to the doctor. We're just ignoring it. We're just thinking, well, if I don't look at it, it won't it won't get any worse. And the truth of it is that if we do look at it, if we do talk about it, it will get better. We will be able to prevent suicide by talking about suicide.